so it's server upgrade time again. So yeah, I'm going to LJ2011. I was going to go Ryzen as you saw in the previous video, but that system just crashes under load. Looks like it's due to the Ryzen seg fault bug. I tried a different CPU, same issue. Tried a lot of BIOS settings, and I just didn't want to deal with it. So I got something that's actually going to work. From what I've seen, this has been pretty good. I have a GPU in here. I'm trying to get GPU pass 2 to work. I'm really hoping it does. Right now, it's causing kernel panics. Uh, I'm currently dual 2680v2s, which are 10 cores, 2.8. Currently has 48 gigs of RAM over sticks, because I just pulled all these sticks out from a 1366 system. Eh, there's nasty power adapter, because I don't have a power supply of dual 8 pins. It's currently running on a 360-watt C-Sonic, which, you know, actually can run on a full load 360. Um, it's going to be moved over to a 750-watt pretty soon. Testing Proxmox, trying to get it to work with GPU pass but it doesn't seem to want to. I have it here currently running the BIOS. Um, the BIOS is awful. It's an S2600 CP board. It's a cheap model. It doesn't have the 4th, 3rd, and 4th NIC here, and it doesn't have the extra SAS controller. But eh, it works fine. Exact same memory and CPU compatibility. So if we go into Advanced, oh my gosh, this, this is the worst I've seen BIOS. I've seen like 20 old systems that aren't this bad. I don't know why. Uh, processor config. Um, it could be under these PCI configs. We could try memory mapped I.O. and above. We'll try turning that off. Eh, I really have no idea. Um, yeah, we're going to leave that off and just hope it does something. Currently I have it so that the onboard video is enabled. The interesting thing is it doesn't want to use onboard video with the top slot, it only does it in the bottom one. But it will work with a GPU in the top slot, it doesn't want to show it as a VGA card, but I don't know why. Um, yeah, and I've tried quite a few options, so we're going to exit, save and exit from here. Uh, it's currently booting from Proxmox with the Windows VM I'm trying to get running. It's going to be running Proxmox in production just like the other system. This is a significantly larger board than a normal ATX board. Normal ATX board ends at I think around like here-ish. Don't know exactly well where this one has to go the full length. So it is an SSI EB board, which is the same size as EATX. The big difference is um, SSI EB has slightly different mounting holes, which should work fine in that case, but I'll have to be cautious of where all the mounting holes are. Uh, and cooler eyes, I'm running two of these deep cool 200Ms on them. They aren't the best coolers, but I can't really get the chip over about 55, 60 degrees C under load, so I don't care. This one does run a bit toasty if you're curious. Slots wise, I actually do get, I think I get six slots in here, I don't know. I think, yeah, I think I only get six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I only get six slots. A 16x here, I think this is an actual 16x. And then an eight, and then an eight for a GPU, another eight X, and two more eights. I think this guy here is running on the second CPU and the rest are running on the first. So it's actually somewhat usable as only one socket. Yeah, that is one thing with these boards. PCI lanes come from there. Same with memory, it's running via NUMA, so you have to pay it up well. Not too much else to look at. Uh, the GPU pass to these things has just been annoying. It probably in 5-10 years from now it'll be just working perfectly and no one questions it, but right now you can't make it work without it being buggy. I'm just going to fire up that VM one more time and if it doesn't work I'll just forget it. Now we're going to see if it's working. So currently this is booting off the GPU that's passed through to a VM. The host here, I've passed the keyboard to it, so this keyboard actually is going to the VM. It's my only keyboard though, but yeah, it's fine. Um, it takes about a minute doing this, and then it's going to load the actual AMD driver. I've installed the actual AMD driver. It worked fine without the AMD driver. It's just limited to like 800 by 600 and has no GPU compute or any abilities. And you just heard it start the fans up for a second, and it does a kernel panic here. I need to do some more Googling on this, but it seems to be just some issue. I'm running the newest kernel that's supported on Proxmox, and I really don't know what the issue is. So I gave it a shot with using a Quadro 5000, thinking it might have been an AMD GPU issue, but same problem. Um, I'm done dealing with this, so let's move it to the actual case it's going to be in long term, and just forget about the GPU and do that for the next server build. So this here is my temporary server after I had to return the Ryzen parts. And looking in it, oh boy, um, this thing's heavy. And inside the temporary server, we see there's an AMD FX chip. 
I think this was a FX oh, 8300 in here. Cooler goes the wrong way. Kept the power supply. Got the SSD in here. So a few other things to note before I can upgrade it. The new board's going to be quite a bit bigger. And you have to keep track of where these standoffs go because they're in different spots. And if you screw up, you short up your board. Uh, PCIe slot should be fine. SATA ports are going to move from here-ish. I don't know how well you can see this. Um, from about here-ish on the board in this spot here to around here, so that'll be fine. Power connectors, one will be here, the new board will have another power connector here. Not too much else, so let's get removing all the current parts from it. So, here's the IO shield, I got it off eBay for this board. It's a bit short, it looks like I got the version for the one use servers, or maybe they only made that version. So if we do a quick test fit, and you can see it'll fit easily, but there's not a lot of extra room on the edge. Just because of how big this board is. So here it is installed in my rack. It's been running quite well for the last, actually, now couple of weeks. Um, no issues that I know of. Running relatively cool on the CPUs, about 40C. Power consumption's a bit higher than I would have hoped, but I mean, dual 2011 versus the older Ryzen, definitely it will use more power. Um, I wish it had VTD and GPU pass through, that would have been nice. Other than that, rock solid. Network performance is fine. Having integrated video out is always handy. Um, onboard SATA works fine, though I wish I'd had the version which had the LSI card for another 8 SATA port so I didn't have to run a RAID card in it. Not much else to say, it's a good stable board for a home server. You can get them relatively cheaply these days, especially if you hunt around some more. And getting the good CPUs like the 10 cores they have makes it really fly. So thanks for watching this video about the server and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I have some upgrades coming that I plan to do, so I plan on potentially adding a few more drives and more RAM once it comes.